Hey everybody, Derek here, here to bring another video for The Walking Dead Season 7. And what this video is going to be doing is doing my review of the latest episode of The Walking Dead, which is called The Well. If you are not caught up with The Walking Dead and you do not want to be spoiled in any way, then I suggest you exit the video now and come back later, because otherwise you will be spoiled. Okay. So overall, I thought this episode was magnificent. I really, really enjoyed it. I liked the fact that we got a little bit of a break from the absolutely devastating episode last week um, with experiencing the Savior's Negan killing Abraham and Glenn. I thought that this was a very nice break from that. It was a good change of pace. And I thought they did a wonderful job with the introduction of uh, Ezekiel, a major character from the comic books. I thought Carrie Payton really did a wonderful job job. I can tell they chose the right actor. He really brought out a lot of the things that I see in the comics from Ezekiel and then some, and I really, really liked uh, his performance, especially tonight. So I'm really glad they made this casting. And it was also nice to see Morgan and Carol back. You know, we've been wondering what was going on with their characters. And I think this episode really did a good job of setting up how I think their characters are going to be functioning in season seven. And overall, it was great. So this episode was great. That's pretty much what I can say about it. So, obviously in this episode, we are introduced to a new community called the Kingdom. And the Kingdom is basically, it used to be a school um, that has since been, you know, remodeled and walls built around it to house a community. And of course, this community is run by a man named Ezekiel, who calls himself King Ezekiel. And if you're a fan of the comics, you know that Ezekiel um, has a pet tiger named Shiva. And basically, King Ezekiel really rules the kingdom almost like you would think of in royalty. You know, you think about a lot of movies that you've seen about, you know, the ancient royal days in England and other um, types of environments like that. It really resembles a lot of that. You know, you see Ezekiel as somebody who commands respect, who commands this you know, royalty, if you will, that he sits on a higher pedestal, but that nonetheless that he cares about his people, his subjects, if you will, maybe, and that he's willing to do a lot of things to protect them and provide for them. So he's not so much a guy who necessarily sits back and lets others do his work. He does get out there and he does, um, you know, pr uh, provide for people, but he doesn't necessarily, um, you know, turn down people calling him King Ezekiel, treating him like he's royalty, treating him like, you know, you know, your majesty, things like that. He doesn't turn that down. And I think in many ways, I think it really sometimes does give him a little boost. I think it does feed his ego. But I do like the character. And, you know, what you saw from King Ezekiel is that he is very extravagant. He is somebody who is just, you always hear his presence. He's always speaking in riddles. He's speaking almost like they would in the old uh, days of England, if you will. And I, I really like that about him. And I think that he really is a character that you see um, at the end of the episode when everything starts to tie together and make sense that really he does this for his people to care about them. You know, he wants to provide for them. He wants to keep them sane, keep them happy, despite all the heck that's going on in the world. So I think that it really makes sense for his character. And I think that it really defines who Ezekiel is. And a lot of the plot line in this episode re revolved around basically just introducing um, the kingdom and Ezekiel. You see that it's a that it's a community that is very peaceful. Not a lot of bad things happen. The people seem to be very nice. They don't seem to argue. They have a lot of different um, activities going on. You know, they're almost living a life that many people in Alexandria were trying to you know model after. You know, they have a chorus. You heard them singing. They had a guitarist. People were you know doing chores, cooking food. Um, you know working in the gardens, things like that. And it really seemed very peaceful. Um, and of course, now, unfortunately, uh, there are a couple of secrets that Ezekiel sometimes, 
you know, keeps from people in order to keep that happiness going. And really, you see that Ezekiel and the kingdom have trained these individuals as warriors. There are several men and women in the community. I believe one's name was Richard. You had, I think the one guy's name was Jerry, like the assistant to uh, Ezekiel. And you also had new warriors, like a character named Benjamin. And Basically, a lot of this episode dealt with them and how they worked outside of the walls and in the walls, and it, it really turns out that they are good fighters. At the beginning of the episode, Morgan and Carol are, of course, being brought to the kingdom, and you see them fighting walkers that the group runs into, and oh my gosh, they were great at fending off the walkers. Such great walker kills in this episode, the one when the, the face got chopped right off that one walker. Absolutely sick. Um, very, very good um, scenes there. But you do find that sometimes Ezekiel has to hide things from the uh, other people in the community. And one of the plot lines that that dealt with was these pigs. Um, there were these wild pigs that were running around outside of the walls or in the town. And it turns out that the kingdom does know of the Savior's presence and that the Saviors have clearly made their presence known to the kingdom. And they demand certain goods, produce, food, things like that from them. And basically, Ezekiel has been able to work out a trade between them. And it seems to be one that works a lot better than what we've seen in the past. If you remember when we looked back at the hilltop, you kind of saw that the hilltop was running out of food and the saviors weren't very happy with the drop. So they killed a couple of people. Um, you saw with Rick's group, they just flat out fought them. But with Ezekiel, you actually find that the relationship seems to be pretty positive. You know, Ezekiel... Uh, he, in a sense, takes Negan and his people very seriously. Uh, in fact, you know, he brought the, the pigs as an offering for the saviors. They meet in this parking lot, and basically they exchange the pigs, um, you know, to the saviors. And again, the saviors won't kill or hurt them. And you see just how much Ezekiel cares about his people, that he's willing to do this. I mean, you know, and you kind of see the mutual respect almost that both groups have for each other. I think the saviors definitely are afraid of Ezekiel. I think they they kind of, you know, command still that presence of respect and not taking any lip from anybody, but they're also very cautious around Ezekiel. They're not really uh, antagonizing him too much. Now, there was an incident where one of the members of the saviors got in a fight with one of the soldiers named Richard, and that, that basically led to Ezekiel... And the others stopping it, you know, Ezekiel saying, look, we can't provoke this fight because if we do, then it's going to be worse on us because the saviors are pretty happy with the way the kingdom treats them. And basically the groups mutually kind of, you know, the, the other savior got to get a little bit of revenge on Richard and punch him a few times. But overall, the situation was kind of mutually stopped and you kind of see that they do in a sense have a working relationship. So I found that to be very interesting in the episode. It is apparent that the kingdom and the saviors do have a relationship. Now, where do Morgan and Carol fit into all of this? Well, obviously Morgan and Carol come to the kingdom and Morgan is able to meet with Ezekiel more. Carol, of course, was shot in the season finale uh, in season six. So, so she's recovering. And eventually Morgan does take Carol to see Ezekiel. And of course, Morgan doesn't know how to explain all of this to Carol. You know, hey, this is a guy who calls himself the king and he has a tiger and it's like royalty, you know. And when we first, you know, see Carol and Ezekiel meet, you kind of see Carol having this just um, look of amazement on her face, but also this look of confusion. She's like, what is going on here? You know, it's just kind of weird for her. And what you see is that with Carol... Um, you know, we still see her struggling quite a bit with uh, her past, you know, a lot of the killing that she has done in the past several seasons. In fact, when they were on their way and they were being attacked by the, the walkers, Carol actually saw the walkers almost as alive, like as people, you know, that <clears throat> when they were killed, they were still walkers, but then their faces would transform into the people that they may have been before they died and became walkers. I think in many ways, Carol 
you know, you see her still struggling with this idea of killing. And I think that that was really what that was uh, showing for her, that in a sense, she wants to renounce all this, but still feeling the guilt of everything that's happening and kind of seeing the devastation in any kind of killing, I think. So you kind of saw her looking at that a little bit. And then when she's first introduced to Ezekiel, she goes right back into that, oh, I'm the, you know, nice person innocent lady who's just been going along in the apocalypse if you remember you know when she first arrived in alexandria she kind of put on that um that persona that she was innocent that really rick's group protected her that she's just all smiles and cooks all the time and cleans and is your typical mother in a sense um and she just goes right back into that identity but of course she has a different um uh, reason for doing that she's doing that because she just wants to fool people enough to think that she's just nice and then eventually she wants to sneak away carol still wants to be on her own she doesn't want to be with people i think that she realizes that being with people is very dangerous it's something that she doesn't want and that's pretty much what she does throughout the entire episode. And now she thinks that Ezekiel, the kingdom, all of it is ridiculous. You know, she thinks that this facade that Ezekiel puts on is just crazy. She thinks the people there are just crazy for going along with everything. And, you know, I, I can understand why Carol would think that way. You know, she thinks that they're living in some kind of fantasy world that just does not exist. That out there, the dangerous people that are out there, um, you know, that they might come upon this community and give... Um, um, all of them a surprise. I think that Carol has just witnessed that too many times to believe that something great can happen there. Um, and I'll get to what happens with them at the end of the episode, but I want to also talk about Morgan. Now, as we know, after season six, Morgan broke Aikido. He ended up killing the savior Roman that was shooting Carol. And Morgan kind of really does fit in very well with uh, the kingdom. You know, I think that Ezekiel really does admire Morgan. He respects Morgan, um, sees the fighting techniques that Morgan is able to use. And in a sense, uh, Ezekiel sees the great things that Morgan can provide and use, uses him as a soldier in this episode. You know, whenever um, he went out to go feed the pigs and capture them, he brought Morgan with uh, them. And Morgan really wants to provide because he, he sees the good in the community. But we see that Morgan is still trying to struggle to find his way. And I found that to be a very good theme for his character that I think we're going to see going down through season seven is that... In season six, I think that we really thought, and Morgan really thought, that he had found his own way, that he had found the correct way to survive, that Aikido was it, nothing else was wrong, but he found that when he applied it and that when he, see, that when he saw what it did, it really just wasn't turning out as good as he wanted. And... In this episode, there's a younger soldier named Benjamin who's having a lot of difficulty maintaining uh, weapons, fighting walkers. He's very, you know, kind of, he's not very good at it. Let's just put it that way. And Ezekiel actually makes Morgan the one who trains Benjamin. And basically he takes Benjamin under his wing. Morgan is able to teach him some of the fighting techniques by Keto. And it's at that point that Benjamin sees the book and basically says, hey, you know, um, I saw your book, I saw the inscription, and Morgan kind of says, well, the thing is, is that I'm really fumbling through this world. You know, he doesn't really embrace everything that Aikido stands for. He basically says, you know, I thought I found the way, I thought this was what it was, but you know, this world's a little different, you know, and it's basically something that, you know, you have to negotiate your way around, and he finds, and he says it, you know, he says, I'm fumbling. And I think that it just goes to show that Morgan has not found his way and he's still trying to find the perfect balance for himself so that he can still survive and keep his sanity because he basically tells Benjamin you know I can provide you know these techniques but I can't show you the way you have to find your own way and I think that's really going to be a theme of Morgan's character finding that way. So I'm really interested to see what they do with him. But at the end of the episode, Carol goes to sneak away and Ezekiel catches her. And basically the two of them have a have a conversation. You know, Ezekiel basically says, you know, you don't BS a BS or you know what I mean by that. Basically that, you know, you can't fool a person who um, is 
not somebody to be fooled, you know, and Carol sees through Ezekiel and Ezekiel sees through Carol. They see the truths in each other. And Ezekiel basically justifies himself. He says, look, I do this because I love my people. I care about them, that living in this facade, living in this fake environment, you know, is actually the best way to survive. It's the way that it keeps people happy. And that's what he cares about. And he keeps wanting to help Carol because Carol wants to leave. And he basically wants to help her. He says, no, don't go back out there all by yourself. You know, you, you shouldn't be out there. I want to help you. And Carol basically goes, well, why do you want to do that? And he goes, because it, it makes me happy. It makes me, you know, feel better about myself. And what they end up doing is, is that earlier in the episode, <clears throat> the group passed by this house and Carol and Morgan end up going back there. Carol is basically going to stay at the house and Morgan agrees to this. You know, Morgan kind of realizes that he was stepping a little too far into Carol's business, trying to control her movements when it really wasn't his place to do that. I think you see Morgan doing more of that. Morgan is kind of letting go of this idea of interfering, of basically using Aikido to control other people's lives. I think he's moving past that. And, you know, the two of them have a very good goodbye. You know, they basically, not goodbye forever, but, you know, Carol's basically going to stay in that house outside of the walls, and hopefully she's going to have contact with the kingdom. So Morgan leaves, Carol stays there, and the very last scene in the episode is Ezekiel showing up at the door with Shiva and basically saying, hey, you know, you should really try one of these apples, making conversation. And I'm very interested to see what Carol and Ezekiel will do for each other in season seven. They may learn a lot from each other, and I think it's going to be a very interesting relationship between the two of them. But again, great episode. I really liked what they did with it, and I can't wait for next week, despite the fact that we're going to be seeing Negan and the Saviors again, but at least we're going to see what is going on with them. We're going to see the sanctuary. We're going to see what's going on with Daryl. I think it'll still be good, so we'll see what happens. So with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. I want to thank all of you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, don't be afraid to leave them. Feel free to subscribe. I do have more videos coming. And if you have any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see, don't be afraid to suggest them. Have a very wonderful evening, and thank you all very much for watching.